Hey everybody, it's Caleb. In this episode, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about how to work with numerous objects. And this is going to be a good introduction to generic lists as well. So hopefully, if that's new, we'll be able to explain that to you as well. So before we get started, special thank you and appreciation to our sponsor who helps make this content possible. This video is sponsored by Diff Blue. DiffBlue offers a free AI-powered unit test generation tool for Java developers. DiffBlue writes your unit tests for you and delivers human-readable code to increase your test coverage and speed up your development, while ensuring you didn't break anything along the way. With a free community edition available as an IntelliJ plugin, DiffBlue is super easy to get started with. Best of all, as a viewer of my channel, you can get a free license upgrade to use the community edition for all commercial code and three free months of the professional edition, which has additional features and support. Get started using the link below. So right now we've been working with objects directly. However, this isn't really a super scalable option because if we're working with, you know, let's say a hundred objects, well, does that mean we're gonna have 100 variables? And you know, we might not always be able to write out each variable in our source code because we might not know all that information until later. So if this is coming from a file or user input, well, that's gonna make it a little bit more complicated. So instead of just creating user variables like this, it's probably ideal to create a list that can contain numerous users. So because object-oriented programming allows us to create our own types, this is our own data type, we can use generically typed things and just use that as the type. So the most common, if that made no sense, let me explain. The most common example of a generic type is a generic list. So let's talk about how to create a list. So for the, we're gonna just create a variable, we'll call it users, plural. And the type of this is actually going to be a list of user. So what we can do is hover over list and we'll want to import that. Ah, but be careful. We want a specific one. We want java.util. And then on the right side, we're going to say new list of user. And then parentheses. So the syntax might be funky if you are new to generic lists. Um, and then there's one other thing. We got an error here. I'm going to explain why in just a second. But basically, the type is list. And then what we want to store in that list, the type of that thing, is in carrots. So any user can go in this list and that's fine. Now on the right hand side, we don't want to use a list. We actually want to use array list. So a little odd, you know, why don't these data types match? And we'll also want to import array list from java.util. So these data types don't match. Come on, import noob. All right, so these data types don't match because on the left hand side, we're actually using an interface list, which is a little bit more general. And then on the right hand side, we're using an implementation array list. So this is, this is a common setup you'll see. However, you can also use array list over here on the left as well. That's fine, but either one should be fine. Oftentimes when you're creating attributes for an object, you'll use a, an interface on the left hand side just to be a little bit more general, which gives the consumer of that class a little bit more freedom on what to choose. But in this scenario, we can just go with an array list on the left and an array list on the right, and that'll do us well. So the way we use this list is we just say users dot add, and this is gonna take a user. So we can just put you in there. <laughs> Not you, like you, but you this user, gosh. I don't want you to get in this users list. And then we can access that user through this list. So let's just go ahead and see how that looks. We'll do a sys out and we would say users dot get pass in an index of uh, zero there. That's gonna return a user object, you. And then we'll say dot, and then we have all the members for that. So get name. So let's run this, see if I'm crazy or if it's actually gonna work. And voila, we get Caleb. So everything seems good. But honestly, how did that help us at all? We started with two lines of code and I said that's not gonna work. So I just added more lines of code and it does exactly the same thing. Yeah, I get it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get rid of these two lines. And instead of adding you the variable, we're going to create a new user inline here, like so. 
and you can set data just the same way or you can use a custom constructor so you could pass in the data here. I want to create one that just requires a username Caleb, create constructor user. And here you're gonna see the user class. If you've been following along, we've been building along with this. However, if you're just jumping in, you don't have to have all this stuff. You just need a absolute basic class and nothing in it except the name, that's fine. If you just wanna follow along partway through here. So this is gonna take a string and we'll just say set name and pass in that name, call that name. Every time you, you do that and you don't save, it gives you an error for some reason, but we'll save and it's, it's working now. So that is how we can add a user inline and we should be able to run this and get the same thing, Caleb. And this will make it a lot easier to add numerous users to this list. So users add, now we'll add you, the person in here. Let's go ahead and add another one in here. Sally. So those are all in there, but I'm just getting that first one. So how do we actually display everybody's username? Well, we can actually use a for loop. So you can do this two, four, two different ways, I guess. We can use a normal for loop. So we'll talk about that and then we'll talk about the other way. So for int i is zero, i less than users dot size, i plus plus. And then we'll just print the name here. So we'll say users dot get and pass in i and then dot get name. Running this, we should get everybody's name. Uh, we got an error. Oh, I don't know what happened there, but I had a little typo. And now when we run this, we get Caleb, you, and Sally. So this is ideal if you need to know that index, but more clean is just a range-based for loop or a for each loop. So for, and then we say the type, so user, just call it you, and it's coming from users. And then we can just print the user itself. So sys out u dot get name. That should work fine. And running this, we have the first loop and then we have that second loop. I obviously prefer the second loop. It's way less typey, a lot less stuff going on. So definitely my preferred way of doing this. So that's just a little bit of experience with generic lists and we're using a custom type, that's pretty cool. Up next, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be talking about static members. So we talked about them first thing in this miniature Java OOP course. However, we kind of glanced over, didn't really talk about it. We're gonna talk about it specifically in the next video. So be sure to subscribe, slap that like button, and I'll see you in the next episode.